Path 99, we are we're looking at section 6.1, uh, which is about exponential functions and things that grow exponentially. Now, this word exponential growth, um, I feel like it gets misused kind of in, in the English language and common parlance, uh, if you will. And sometimes people say something's growing exponentially when it's um, <clears throat> growing quickly. But that's not what it means. It doesn't just, just mean it's growing really quickly because it could be growing really quickly linearly. What it means is it's growing by multiplication. So for example, if I look at the function uh, f of x equals 2 to the x, uh, sorry, 2 to the x, what's going on there is, uh, well, let's see, when x is 1, 2 to the first power is 2. When x is 2, 2 to the second power is 4. When it's 3, it's 2 to the third power, right? 2 to the third, uh, which is 8, and so on. If you notice how this is growing, as x increases by 1, this is growing by multiplication. It's times 2 each time. That is exponential growth. Um, the change in y, as, as x is changing by just a constant addition, y is changing by some multiplication. That makes it exponential. And it could be multiplication by a fraction. could be getting exponentially smaller. Uh, that's still called exponential growth. But uh, that's that's an example of exponential growth. And if I think about a graph of this, like, let's see, 1 is at 2, so that's like this. Notice if I go over 1 to x is 2, this height here doubles. If I go over 1 again, this height will double again. So it's going to be a curve that's getting pretty big pretty quick. Every time this goes over 1, this height here doubles. Uh, when that's a 2, if that's a 3, it would triple, and so on thing. But it's changing by multiplication. And there are values in between these as well. So notice that we can't actually connect these. Like I could go 2 to the 1.5. And if I do that on my calculator, it'll give me a value. How about 0? 2 to the 0th power. Well, anything to the 0th power is 1. Uh, except zero, but so anything to the zeroth power is one. Um, and then, well, let's extend this this way as well. How about negative one or negative two or negative three? A couple ways to think about this. Notice this is going times two in this direction. So if you go the opposite direction, it must be divide by two. So two to the negative one is one half. Right? Divide by 2. Uh, 2 to the negative 2 is 1 fourth. 2 to the negative 3 is 1 eighth. So this will get closer and closer. So if you notice this graph starts to flatten out here, there's an asymptote here, uh, and it curves and comes up like this. All right, there's some, some values for us. Um, so this part of the equation right here is the growth factor. That's how fast it's, it's growing each time. So if I think about uh, something that looks like this, five times uh, three to the x. It might be written that way, might be written like this, might be written like this, where that's a three. They're all the, they're all the same thing. They're all saying the same thing. Five times three to some power. So when it's in this, that, uh, in, in this form, that multiplier right there, that's going to be kind of the start. That's going to be when x is 0, I have 5 times 3 to the 0. 3 to the 0 is 1. It's 5. So this point, 0, 1, would be a 0, 5. And then notice it'd be growing by 3 each time, tripling each time. So we could think of this as the y-intercept, 0, 5. And then it'll go over one, and then it would triple in height as it goes over one. So that's the growth. So here's my general form for it. I'll write it as a function f of x equals uh, a times b to the x. a is the y-intercept, um, or you could say it's the initial value, uh, the initial kind of start value. And b is the growth factor. So in this one, 0, 5. And then that multiplier would be 3. Y-intercept, 
growth factor. So thinking about some of these, I'll throw up a couple of uh, equations here. 30 times 2 to the x. These are all exponential functions. That's a b. So if I wanted to evaluate something like f of sub b, I'm plugging 3 in. So that would be 30 times 2 to the third. Notice I'm starting at 30 and I'm multiplying by 2 three times. And I could do that, just do that on my calculator, right? I could just go like 30 times 2 to the power of, and that caret right there gives me to the power of 3. So it's 2. And I could evaluate uh, f of negative 2. Notice what this is. This is 30, but then I'm dividing by 2 two times, right? Multiplying by a half two times. And again, I can do that. Uh, I don't know. That feels like it should be 7.5. But if I do that in my calculator, uh, 30 times 2 to the power of negative 2, 7.5. Same with things like this. If I have 8 uh, times 1.2 to the power of x minus 5 and I wanted to evaluate f of 7, say, I'm just going to plug in 7 for x. The way I would do it is I go 8 uh, times 1.2 to the power of, and now I'm going to put that exponent uh, in parentheses, 7 minus 5. So it takes it to that whole parenthesis. I get 11. Uh, notice what happened is 7 minus 5 is 2, so I multiplied by 1.2 twice, um, 8. I started with 8, and I increased it by 20% twice, and I got that. If I look at this equation, I'd be starting at 100, and when I multiply by 1.5, if you'll notice, I'm increasing it by 50%. 1.5 is the same as 150%. Point five. If you think about that as a as a percent, so it's a hundred percent plus fifty percent more. And that's not a bad way to uh, to think about these. So I could have something that says this: the population at a given time, one point two five times one point oh one two to the t, where t is in years, and p is the population in billions. So if I want to read this. I want to read this equation where the pieces come from. The initial population, when the time is zero, when we started measuring, is 1.25 billion. And then notice each time t increases by 1, we multiply by 1.012. Let me think about that. 1.012. Um, that's like 101.2%, which is, notice 100%, which is the population itself, plus... 1.2% more. So I can read this and I can say this population is projected to be growing by 1.2% every year, right? And that percent compounds and keeps big, keep getting uh, larger and larger. Great. Hey, let's take a look at this graph right here. Write an equation for it. So I know it's starting here at this three. So I know that um, that's the point zero three. So my equation, Call it f of x. Oh, yeah, it's labeled f of x. I know it's going to be 3 times something to the x. And I notice as I go over 1, I go from 3 up to 6. Notice it's times 2, right? Every time I go over 1, its height doubles. So my multiplier is 2. I'm going to write an equation for this one. It's going through the point uh, 0 square root of 2. So f of x, my y-intercept is root 2. And then it's, i got to see how it's... How about this? I could pick a point and just see if I can get it to work. Let me call this b. And I notice that this goes through the point, really easy to read, x is 1 when y is 2. So the output is 2 when the input is 1. 1 to... Uh, sorry, when the input is 1, x is 1. b to the first power is just b. So I have 2 equals b times the square root of 2. I'm trying to figure out what b is. Divide both sides by root 2. 
So I've got b equals 2 over root 2. Wow. So this would be, my equation would be f of x equals square root of 2. My multiplier is 2 over the square root of 2 to the x. Notice what I did is I put in as much information as I knew, and then I grabbed a point, and then I solved for b. It's a good technique. Similarly, along those lines, if I just had a graph, and I just I knew that it was exponential growth, it goes through the point 1, 3, and it goes through the point uh, 2, 4.5. And I want to write this equation for it. y equals a times b to the x. You know, that might be an f of x, same thing. So notice I, I want to find a and b, and I have two x's and two y's. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug these in. So when x is 4. Point, uh, when x is 2, y is 4.5. So I have 4.5 equals a times b to the second power. And when x is 1, b is 3. So I also have 3 equals a times b to the first power. What I can do with these equations now is some division. In other words, if I divide like this, let's see, 4.5 divided by 3. I'm just going to leave that as 4.5 over 3 for now. And let's do it. 4.5. 1.5. And if I go a divided by a, well, that's a 1. b squared divided by b is b, so b must be 1.5. Notice how I could plug the points in, and I could figure out one of the equations. So now I know that y equals a times 1.5 to the x. And now if I want to find a, well, I could just plug in another one of these points again. So how about I plug in this one? When x is 1, y is 3. 3 equals 1.5. Uh, to the first power times a. So 1.5 to the first power is 1.5. Divide both sides by 1.5. Ah! And I think I get a equals 2. So my equation of exponential growth that goes to these points would be y equals 2 uh, times 1.5 to the x. I just did what's called, uh, what's called some curve fitting. Pretty good stuff. So what this allows me to do is answer some questions um, like this. Uh, so in, I'll have year and population. So in the year 2006, uh, let's say there were 80 deer in a forest. And in the year 2012, uh, there were 180 deer. And I want to write an equation that should model this. In other words, I'm going to assume this population is growing exponentially, and I want it to, uh, to reflect the growth. So there's a couple ways I could do this. One is just think about this. If I think about time, I could start my time at 2006, and this would be six years later. So when x is 0, the population is 80. So I know this is true. And when the year is 6, the population is 180. So I know this is true. So let's see if I can figure out a and b's from these. Well, anything to the 0th power is 1. So this is a times 1. So a equals 80. Cool. So I, then I can plug that into here. 180 equals 80 times b to the 6th. I want to solve for b. So divide both sides by 80. 2.25, b to the 6th power. And the way I undo the 6th power is I can either take it to the 1 6th power, or I can take the 6th root. So I think I'll go the 6th root of 2.25 equals b. Notice that's the same as going 2.25 to the 1 6th power. And the way I can do that on my calculator is I want the 6th root of 2.25. So I'm going to go into my math menu. I'm going to pull this, this uh, command right here, which is the xth root. This is saying take the sixth root of 2.25, and I get about 1.145. So my rule then would be it starts at 80, and it's increasing by about 14, 15, uh, no, yeah, 14, 15% every year. I'm going to do one more uh, problem that's like this, kind of. I'm going to have it go through the points, negative 2, 6, and 2, 1. And I'm going to assume exponential uh, change. So my model is a, b, b, x. So I'm going to plug these in. 
Uh, x is negative 2 and y is 6. So 6 equals a is p to the negative 2. Uh, x is 2 and y is 1. So let's do some division here. 6 divided by 6 is, uh, 6 divided by 1 is 6. A divided by a goes, whoa, I have b to the negative 2 over b squared. That's interesting. That's the same as 1 over b to the fourth, right? Negative exponent switches where it's at in there. So I have 1 over b to the fourth. Hmm. Multiply both sides by b to the fourth. Divide both sides by 6. b to the fourth equals 1 sixth. So undo the fourth by taking the fourth root. 1.666 repeating, which is not 1 sixth. I know what I did wrong. I need to put that 1 sixth in parentheses. I went the fourth root of 1 divided by 6. Whoops. Ah, there we go. That looks more reasonable to me. What was it about? <laughs> 0.639. So notice that my B value is about 0.639. This implies that it's decaying. In other words, if I were to graph these, negative two sixes here, two ones about here, this is exponential decay. It's decreasing by a certain amount each time. And that decrease is multiplicative. It's like B, it's about 64% of what it was before. So let's do this. Let's try this. We want to know how to, um, given two points on a curve, use our calculator to, uh, to get there. So let's follow these directions and see if we can't get this do some work for us. Okay, so press stat. There's stat. Uh, clear the, any existing entries in, in columns. One, line one or line two. So I'm going to edit. Okay, they're clear. If they weren't clear, I could go up here to it and say clear, and it'll clear it out. Um, in L1, enter the x coordinates given. Okay, so let's see. X is three and y is, and x is six. Three, six. Uh, in L2, enter the y coordinates. So 75.98. Hit enter. And uh, 41.07. Okay, press stat again. Cursor right to calc. That's the here right here. Scroll down to x reg, exponential regression. So what this is going to do is this is going to write a, a rule. Hit enter, hit enter again. So it's going to tell you the A and B values. So your calculator will do this work for you too if you follow these steps for it. Uh, those are I pulled those out of the text. You can uh, of course do what you want with those. <laughs> now this idea of um, of uh, things growing uh, with exponential this has really good money implications. So like if I think about thirty percent, if I just think about really simple interest with thirty percent. Let's say I borrow 500 bucks and I have 30, I need to pay back 30% per year. Notice I could say 500, that's what I'm starting with, times 100% of the loan, right? I have to pay back the 500 plus 30%. I'm going to write that as a decimal. But then that 1.3 gets compounded as many years as I let it sit there. If I let it sit there for five years, notice it's going to get like, multiplied by that five times, and then whatever that is is what I'd have to pay back. So if I say uh, 500 times uh, 1 plus 0.3, you might just enter it as 1.3 to the power of 5. Notice you're getting 30% you're, you're getting compounded to it five times. Uh, you would end up having to pay well, like three times the loan. <laughs> uh, plus. Now this is what's called simple interest. Uh, notice we have principal 1 plus the rate to the power of the time. This isn't how uh, it actually works. So what happens is um, we take the, the, the rate and we say it's going to be compounded so many times in a year. So like on this one, let's say instead of 30% compounded at the end of the year, I'm going to compound it four times during the year. So I still have that $500. 
I still have um, my 30%, but I'm only going to pay a fourth of the rate, but I'm going to do it four times a year for five years. So notice what's happening. You get a smaller rate, but it happens more times. And that kind of feels like it should be a wash, like it, it shouldn't matter. But what I want you to notice on here, and then up here I'm going to put this in parentheses, the four times five, so it's taking to that whole power. It actually grows faster. Um, even though you're doing less rate, you're doing the rate more frequently. And so this is, this is compound interest. This is how compound interest works. And our rule for compound interest is uh, the amount that it's worth at time t is the principal times 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compoundings to the power of the number of compounding. So, and that rate's always expressed as a decimal. Principal is uh, what it starts with. So let's think about this. Um, $100, $1,000 at 10%, uh, three years. And let's compound it uh, quarterly or monthly or daily. So quarterly, when we go to set that up, my principal is 1,000, one plus my rate divided by the number of compoundings. Quarterly, there's four quarters to the power of four times three. So notice if I do it quarterly, it's this. If I do it monthly, it's all the same, except this, instead of a four, will be a 12. And if I do it daily, instead of four, we'll assume 365 days in a year. That'll be 360. So let's see, uh, 100,000. <laughs> I don't want to borrow so much money. One plus a 0.1 divided by four times three. So if I let it sit there that long, it becomes um, about 1344 and some and some pennies. Now if I do it monthly, that four becomes a 12, right? I get a twelfth of the rate, but it happens 12 times over the course of three years. And that's bigger. And then if I do 365, if I do it daily, that 12 becomes a 365, and it gets even bigger. So that's how we can use that, um, that sort of annual rate and that, and that growth. Um, one thing that I want you to, uh, to know is that is our formula for compounding interest. Now, you may be thinking, as n gets really big, this thing gets bigger and bigger, but you noticed it was getting bigger and bigger at a slower rate. So as n gets really big, this actually simplifies. If we compound, um, in other words, you know, you could keep going crazy with this, right? Like by the second, by the millisecond. Um, but if we compound what's considered continuously, it's constantly changing. Uh, the formula becomes this. And E, is a number, it's basically one plus one over n to the power of n for really big n's. Um, it has, it's the fastest you can make this, make this grow. And it's, it's called the natural base. And if you'll notice, like E is pretty special. It has two places on the calculator even. But E is about, it's a little less than three. So E is about 2.718, but you can just use a calculator button for it. And it's a number a lot like pi in the sense that it goes on forever, never repeats itself. Um, it pops up in a lot of crazy places. So if I'm going to compound continuously, so for example, I could say uh, $1,000 at 10%, just like before, three years, but compound continuously. That's where I use this formula. So the amount is the principal times the number e to the power of the rate, as a decimal, times the time. The way that I'm going to do that on my calculator, 1,000. And notice I have an e to the button, times e to the power of, and the parentheses comes with it, uh, 0.1 times 3. And I've maxed out that, that amount that I can get over three years at 10% by compounding it continuously. 
and in which case we use this formula. And then we have compounding, uh, just compounding interest that's not continuous, and we use this formula. For it. All right, there is a lot there. Uh, give it a go. Let me know what questions you have. Talk in messages as you ask questions.